I'm a engineer on a steel horse I ride. I'm wanted, dead or alive. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I'm really excited to be here with you. We're going to talk in this next segment about rock shear. Oh, rock shear, it sounds like something like geotech, right? Well, I'm going to give you all the dirt on rock shear coming up. Wait, what's that? What's that? It's block shear? Like B-L-O-C-K? Block shear? Well, why am I doing this whole rock and roll thing? Fine, fine, fine. I'll stick to the script. I'm sorry, folks. I'm really excited to talk to you about block shear. And well, let's see. If we're going to stick to the script, we better see what our objectives are going to be. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to explain the limit state of block shear. And then if you go on to the next videos, you'll be able to calculate the design strength of tension members for yielding fracture and block shear and develop conclusions. What does that sound? Does that sound good? Yeah. All right, so what's block shear? Block shear is a rupture limit state where failure occurs by the tearing out of a block of material at the member end. This will result in total member separation. All right, so I got this angle here to kind of model block shear, right? As we pull it, we're gonna do something like this. So you can see that the member fractures, it pulls away as a fracture tear right here, fracture on the net tension area. And then along where we have all these bolt holes, we get a shear failure. So this is gonna be a shear fracture on the net area in shear. And so as we pull apart, we're left with this block, hence the name block shear. And again, you can see shear area, tension area. Now, it's not only bad enough that this is gonna happen and result in total member separation, um, but also if we had just the case of fracture here, but then it just kind of yielded or stretched here, we're not gonna accept that either, okay? So those are gonna be the formulas, how we develop the formulas for block shear and uh, tension members. It's not just limited to these angles though. We can take a look at a general uh, state. So I'm gonna look at a gusset plate connection as well. So this is just a plate member attached to a gusset plate. So we can see we can extend the concept of block shear to this member. And as we pull, we'll see we'll get tension along the perpendicular to the applied force. And then we'll get shearing parallel to the applied force so that we end up with a total member separation there. You can see the shear and tension areas described. All right, well, this isn't guaranteed to be the failure block. We could look at other ones. What happens if we have a combination of two shear planes and fracture on the net section area? We'll get fracture here, and then we could shear along the bottom, shear along the top, and you would get some sort of separation like that. So this would be the next block shear. Again, total member separation, failure at the connection, big problems for you. What else do we have to check? Is there another possible state that we need to check on this? Well, let's go ahead and pull on this one and find out. Oh man, we can't forget to connect, uh, check the connection plate. This gusset plate can also fail and that's gonna result in a shear failure on two surfaces of that gusset plate as well as a tension fracture. And as you can see, we again have total member separation. So hopefully that gives you an idea what block shear is and you're always going to remember it. While we might not have rock, but at least block shear definitely applies to heavy metals. So let's go ahead and add some of this stuff into our notes. So just to reiterate our block shear, it is a rupture limit state where failure occurs by the tearing out of a block of material at the member end.
this will result in total member separation. So whenever we draw blocks to check, whenever we're doing our block shear checks and we're sketching out different failure blocks, remember we want complete member separation at the end of failure. So we looked at the example for the angle member. So that's shown here in example A. So you can see there the shaded portion is the block that we considered for failure in this particular member. Now on this block, we're going to pull out the net tension area. So we've labeled that here in red. And that is the surface perpendicular to the applied load. This is where we're going to have like fracture, just like our fracture limit state. On this green surface heading longitudinally down the block, this is where we're expecting to have failure in shear. A lot of times when you imagine the failure surface in shear, you want to kind of imagine it ripping through the bolt holes in our connection. Uh, we'll also have to take a look at this for welded connections, but we'll do that a little bit later. The resulting failure, combination of failure and tension and shear, will result in the member separating as shown in the picture below and as we saw in that demonstration. Likewise, we'll look at example B. Example B was the plate member attached to the gusset plate example that we looked at in the demonstration. And here you can see we're considering three possible failure mechanisms. Failure of the plate member ripping out a corner of the block, failure of the plate member ripping out the inside, and then lastly, we don't forget the connection or the gusset plate. 